And then I said, let's do the design during the appointment. So while he's waiting there, so after the scan, we put topical on, I went into numb. Now I wanna share a little bit more difficult example because it's in the aesthetic zone. So this time we have a case and this one really put the pressure on. So literally that previous case and a few after that made me able to get prepared to do this type of thing more routinely when I need to do it fast and efficiently. So in this case, the patient told us that he had his veneer come out. It wasn't a restoration that I had done. And he wanted it re-cemented before his daughter's bar mitzvah. So, you know, I said, okay, let's re-cement it and we can worry about changing things. But turns out when he arrived that it was broken into several pieces. There was no way, it was incomplete. There's really no way to re-cement that. But I only had enough time for basically a re-cement, about an hour maximum. And for me, I need a little more time the way I work. So that made it very stressful, especially not having a pre-op situation. So what I decided after thinking about it for a sec is let's try to clone the other side. So I did a scan and um, that only takes one or two minutes. My assistants are doing this now and they're getting really efficient with this. And then I said, let's do the design during the appointment. So while he's waiting there, so after the scan, we put topical on, I went in to numb him, let it kick in, but I went and I quickly did the design with my goal to have a design made before we start the procedure. So here I am in design and I brought in his uh, upper and lower this time so I can evaluate occlusion. And um, I like to duplicate whatever I'm working on just in case so I don't have to reopen. So I'm going to edit mode and I'm using the duplicated maxilla and same, very similar process. So we're gonna clone. So you press that duplicate button over there, then you select the tooth you want. So I'm gonna pick number six and um, you can again, refine the selection as needed, but um, this did a pretty good job, but I want to try to do it as a veneer. There's another way you can do it, though. You could leave it like this and erase it later. So different workflows, I'm still figuring out which one would be my favorite. But right now, I just said, let's take it as a veneer and bring it over. So I just kind of erased some of this selection area over there. And then uh, you press the check mark. And what that does is now you have a duplicate of that selected area. I like to rename that. So I'm gonna call that one number six, duplicate. So now I can hide everything and this is what I have. Now we want, again, we wanna have a mirror image of that. So we're going to use the mirroring tool right down there with the little arrow and the two triangles. And um, you pick what you're gonna mirror, okay? It's not what's showing on the screen, it's whatever you pick. So I'm gonna pick that, move it over, press the check mark. So now I have like this mirrored area and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this because I don't need it. You can also just delete the layer. That's another way to do it because it created two different objects when it does that. Now this is number 11 design or clone or whatever you wanna call it. So um, now I'm gonna work on that. And again, we gotta get it into the right position, right? So that's where you go into the transformation mode at the top over there, right? So you click transformation mode, you pick the uh, tooth, next that's what you wanna transform and we can move it into position. And as I've done this more, I've also learned some cool tips and tricks here. So never really thought of looking for occlusion, but I'll show you now that when you bring in the opposing and you look through the bottom, you can actually see that. But first you wanna get it close. I have a little too much gap in the gingival area. So I do this, but it looks like it's a little too lingual now. And I'm pretty sure that's gonna have an occlusal problem. So that's probably not the right choice. I probably need to bring it out and tip it a little bit like this. And then I can get it positioned nicely. And then finally, take a look at my occlusion. So you see that intersection over there. So I can kind of fine tune it and just peek through the opposing and get an idea. And it's okay, I don't mind adjusting a little bit on something like this. You don't wanna to spend too much time if it needs to be done during the procedure. The whole thing took me about 10 minutes during his appointment and I was able to finish the whole appointment on time. So now you go into edit mode and what you wanna do is make this fit better onto uh, the existing prep or whatever is left. So um, morph tool. 
is what I want to use. And you can also do this with the duplicated maxilla still present, but I just wanted to get a little bit of extension there. So I'm just kind of peeking at it. And then it's just as long as you're selecting the tooth, you're not going to do anything to the maxilla, which is really cool. It's pretty intelligent because it knows that you don't want to do that. And so here I'm just dragging it over the margins, closing the proximal contact and embrasures really. You can use the add tool. So I'm sculpting more and using the add tool to add a little bit more volume there. You can go back to the morph tool. So I'm kind of jumping back there and just kind of over contouring it a little. And then finally, you can do the smooth tool and you can use keyboards for all these. When you get the hang of them, it's one, two, three, and four. And you start to get the hang of doing these shortcuts and it really speeds things up. So here I have the design looks good, but again, it's not connected as one piece. So this time I didn't delete the tooth, but I can actually merge the two together using the same tool. So it's the Boolean union. So I'm going to press Boolean union. I'm going to pick both of those and give it a second and it's going to create my final printable model and so now i go back to the appointment and my assistant's printing this and i'm able to uh, know that i'll have a silicone putty by the end of the appointment that i can use to provisionalize so this this is the final model for 3d printing we use the fastest speed my printer has it's called ludicrous mode and it prints them really fast so between everything it was less than an hour between printing washing and curing and making the provisional so i was able to get it done during the appointment meanwhile i just cleaned up the prep and one of the things i do is called immediate dentin sealing if you haven't heard of it that's one of the key things that improves adhesion minimizes uh, fracture of ceramic and complications it's again something that is part of biomimetic dentistry and something i teach in my courses. So I finished that, I took my final scan and just when I was ready to provisionalize, the putty was ready. So my assistant made the putty. I've been working with her for a while to make a variety of different silicone putties. So that's really nice to be able to delegate things like that. So now I have the provisional and I'm filling it with Luxatemp, no, actually Vesalis, which is a very strong PMMA. This patient's known for breaking other restoration. So I want something nice and strong. And so I fill it, I put it in, I Vaseline the tooth ahead of time, okay? Because I did immediate dent and sealing, if you don't Vaseline, you'll get adhesion and that will not be pretty on cementation day. But you Vaseline to create a separation, you place the uh, material in there and then you can uh, remove the excess and stain and glaze intraorally in one go. So here I'm, just applying a little bit of cervical stain, a little bit of glaze, nothing too fancy here. It's only going to be for a short time. And um, I can give that a final cure so it's got a nice appearance. And um, again, the, the shade that I used for that was the, a bleach shade. So I'm able to tone it down if I need to using a little bit of a shade. Then on cementation appointment, um, I use rubber dam and I'm using heated composite. So a patient returns. I actually tried in the restoration and unfortunately the uh, shade was off, but I've been doing more and more stain and glaze both on provisionals and on ceramic. So I was able to actually correct it myself and get a really nice result here. So I had to, it was, it was too high value. I had to add some additional a shade i use luster paste one from gc and i think i got a really nice result patient um, was very happy with it he would have accepted the higher value too but I, I just felt we needed to do our best to give it a nice result so from those cases let's just stay on this for a second from those cases you can see some of the cool applications with medit design and that's just really the tip of the iceberg now i'm starting to do simple designs like i guess my goal is not to do any more wax ups for the longest time i've been doing digital designs for complex cases like 10 or more teeth um, i use an app for that and i do really nice complex designs but 
we were still doing wax ups for the single posteriors or smaller cases. And now I'm trying to do things with the Meta Design app so that we can completely eliminate wax up or really minimize it because it'll save us time. It gives us more flexibility. Uh, it's a good record. So take a look at this case. This patient wants to treat number eight and nine for a couple of reasons. It's a little hard to see from this photo, but it has a yellowish tint right down that craze line. Um, it was sealed over with resin that discolored previously, but also she said her previous dentist kept shaving it down and she doesn't like how short it is. And she wants to keep the identity of her own teeth. And that's kind of a really challenging thing, I think, but there's a really great way to do that, which is to actually literally clone their own teeth and stretch it out and just refine it. So that's what I did. With the same steps we've already covered, I brought it into Medit Design app, I duplicated the two teeth, I transformed to make them longer, and then I added just a little bit of volume in the cervical, and I was able to get a design where we're adding just that little bit of length. She didn't expect too much. She knew that we really can't add too much length or we're going, we're going to have a awkward contour or situation, but to her, it was important to get that. So we do that. I show it to her, but even better is to see it in the mouth with that mock-up procedure. So I 3D print this and we do a mock-up. So I have a silicone putty made from that printed model and we do the mock-up again using a PMMA this time uh, again, it's a Vesalis and it's the bleach light shade to kind of compensate for that yellowish tint. And you wait till it hardens up, remove the excess, and um, you can still see some of that yellowish tint showing through. It's extremely thin. This is a no prep mock-up. It's just to evaluate and get her approval on the shape. So she looks at it and um, this was actually the second mock-up, the first one was uh, a little bit too long. We actually went just a hair shorter and she really liked this and gave her approval. So now we're gonna use that for our final design. So with these few different cases, I'm just kind of sharing all the different things. I'm using Meta Design App and it's a, it's a project that's in the works. I'm still making more and more applications for these things as I discover the potential and I learn how to harness it. So. I hope if you're not already doing these things that you're able to learn something from this lecture and really understand the power of these different utilities. I'm very grateful that Medit's given us those tools and I'm using them all the time for increasingly more difficult tasks.